Hello again, Irish fans, and welcome to the 20th 20, season 20. of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. When you took this job on this floor 20 years ago, did you ever think you'd still be here 20 years later? Oh, Jack, you know, I told you many times, I was just hoping I wouldn't get fired in the first five years, but to be at this very special place for year 20 and work with the kind of young people I work with, I'm very blessed. The Irish have already played eight games. They have won six of them, so we have lots of highlights to show you, but we have to deal with the one piece of really yeah. negative news that's come out of this first stretch, and that's we're just back from the Maryland game. Robbie Carmody, serious injury. I know he still hasn't had his MRI, but what's the outlook there? Yeah, I think we have a torn ACL there, so it'll cost him the rest of the season, and, you know, he'll have to rehab it and get it back. I think we could get his eligibility back, and he may be a six-year man like Scott Martin was. He may be get a Ph.D. before it's all over as brilliant as he is but disappointing for our team because I felt he was starting to trend as a driver and a slasher yeah. and a physical kid um, so you have to regroup and move on but we will not have him the rest of the season when we come back we will take you to Chapel Hill for Notre Dame's season opening game against North Carolina inside Notre Dame basketball is presented by tirerack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM. I don't think a Notre Dame team has ever had a tougher <laughs> opener than you did going to Chapel Hill to take on then ninth ranked and now seventh ranked North Carolina, but your team responded well. Yeah, I thought we played really well. I mean, it's a heck of a job to have to go play a league game and play at Carolina, but we were ready to compete and I thought we played well. We were up one at half and we really had our chances in the second half. But this guy named Cole Anthony got into an unbelievable rhythm and we just couldn't hold him off. I think one of the themes this year is for you to beat quality competition, Hub and Gibbs have to shoot it well. And they did in this game from both inside and outside the arc. They were 14 to 29 from the floor and nine of 15 from three. Well, they were gonna be a key for us. And now this is their second year playing together. So they should be more comfortable. And in most of our games, they have been. You were down four with 440, four left in the first half, and your guys go on a 9-0 run, fueled by eight straight points from Prentice Hub to take a five-point lead. Hub had a career-high 22 in the game, and he normally really shines when the spotlight is brightest. He, he really does. I think, you know, it showed a, a year under his belt as a starting guard, as a freshman. His body is stronger, he's healthier, and he does love the brightest lights. Gives you the three to start the second half to give you a four point lead. That's a lead you held until the 12-18 mark. And then that guy named Cole Anthony, who Notre Dame recruited hard. You were in it with him right down to the end, but he had the best debut in the history of the ACC for a freshman. He, he really did. I mean, uh, the one thing I tip my cap to Cole Anthony, he was not a great shooter when he was a young player, but he's become a very good shooter. And he made some bombs over the top of us that we just couldn't regroup and, and couldn't hold on in there. I loved how he competed. I loved how we went for it. We just couldn't weather one guy going off. So Anthony scored 34 points. The Tar Heels beat you 76-65. That's how you began this segment. You just ended it against another ranked team in third rank Maryland. Again, you got off to a great start. You know, we got off to a great start, Jack. Um, and, and I'm so impressed with Maryland. You know, on the defensive end, that was about as good as we were going to do against them, but we just could not score. I think you got to give Maryland's defense a lot of credit with their length and their closing out. We didn't get many clean looks. We couldn't get much in transition, and we were kind of stalled offensively. After that first spurt, everything was a chore to score, and, and we just couldn't get over the hump, and, and a very good Maryland team put it on us. The partnership between Mooney and Durham is really developing. They scored your first nine points as you built a five-point lead, but to keep doing that, they need help from the perimeter. Yeah, we, we got to make some shots over the top, Jack, and that has been the mystery for us and the weakness for us. You know, for us to beat good teams, we're going to have to make some clean looks from outside. And again, we couldn't do that enough. I, I, I agree with you. I love how Mooney and Durham are playing together, but we'll keep working on it. And if you got an open shot, you better take it. They did blitz you at late in the first half, especially in the second half. It was all Maryland, but one guy 
that you know every night is going to come to work and give you a great effort. It's John Mooney. Had his 26th double-double of the year. Game high, 17 points with 12 rebounds. You know, I felt at times with Johnny, you know, he's taken on everybody sometimes and, and he's exhausts himself. But I, I think everyone has the utmost respect for him. He only knows one way to play and he goes all out. And uh, we just got to get our other group digging in and we can't hang our heads when we miss a jump shot. We just got to get back and play defense. And, and we got to understand it's a very long season. We're still early in the game here. So Maryland wins at 72-51. We just showed you the two games Notre Dame played against top 10 teams. But between these two games, the Irish ran off six straight wins. We'll show you all those highlights beginning right after this break. After the Carolina game, you come home to play the first of four games in the Men Against Breast Cancer Tournament, the exempt event that you hosted this year. And you got off to a great start shooting. I, I thought we did, Jack. You know, we got out of, the, out of the gate early and we talked about, you know, having a home identity, improving from last year and making a statement at home. And, and I thought we got into a really good offensive rhythm and we were excited to play on this court. You took control with an 11-3 run midway through the first half that included back-to-back -back buckets from Dane Goodwin, who made six of his eight shots and led you in scoring with 18 points. Well, he is going to be so important for us, Jack, coming off the bench. Where we need to get him going is on the road. He has been a really comfortable guy here on our court. We need to get him into that mode on, on the road, too, but he's got to score for us off the bench. Prentice Hub really broke the game open late in the half with five straight points, a beautiful driving reverse layup, and a three. Yeah, and, and again, I think Prentice, with a year under his belt, the legs are strong, the body's stronger. We need him to score. We need him to make plays for us. We've talked a lot about the offense in this game, but I know you were really impressed with your team's defense, one that held Robert Morris to just 20 points in the first half. You know, I, the one thing this group has done as we're trying to figure out who we are offensively, we have guarded together and we've known that's the only way to survive and stay in games and win games is by defending. And this group has done that. So I, I like where we are on the defensive end of the floor. So the Irish beat Robert Morris 92-57, and three days later, you take on Howard. Another great start for your team in this one. You jump out to a 7-0 lead for the points from Juwan Durham, including a steal and a coast-to-coast -coast drive by the big guy that ended with a Euro-step layup. He had 11 points, five rebounds in the game. You know, I think Juwan Durham is finding himself, okay? This is his fourth year of college. He's healthy. He's stronger, he's more mature, and he has some great teammates to play with. I just think he's going to get better as the year goes. Rex Pfluger had his best offensive night to this point in the season with 10 points plus 5 rebounds and 2 assists as he continues to get noticeably stronger each day coming back from that knee injury. Uh, you know, he, he just makes winning plays and key plays for us. I mean, it, we missed him, and I didn't know how much we missed him until the first couple practice he was back. He's key rebound here, key loose ball here, key assist here. He just kind of stirs the drink for you. And of course, another great effort from Mr. Consistency, John Mooney, 18 points and 16 rebounds for his second straight double-double. Now it's just, he's machine-like, Jack. He really is machine-like, and he's a physical specimen because he just comes back and do does it every night. So Notre Dame beats Howard 79-50, and three days later, there's a theme here. You get back on the court against the thundering herd of Marshall. Marshall out of Conference USA was a good test for your team. Have a lot of talented ACC-type bodies, and again, you get off to a great start, hitting six of your first eight shots on the way to building a 17-point lead. And we've gotten off to good offensive starts, here. you know, here. This is, that's been, you know, good for us. Uh, and you know what, I never thought we could get completely away from Marshall. They get too much talent, too much athletic ability, and they come back and make it interesting, and then we have to make some plays to escape. Included in that spurt, three straight threes, including two by T.J. Gibbs. T.J. has to be consistent offensively. He has to make open shots for us when the ball comes around to him and he's got his feet set him making him at a good clip and he really has been making him at a good clip so far this season overall good starts have not been unusual for your team unfortunately it has not been unusual for your team to then go cold and that's what happened in this game and marshall cut the lead to four we just four and a half minutes left in the first half we we have not been this really consistent offensive group but it, for the most part it has not affected us back on the defensive end where we're we're hanging our head or we're, we're you know we're we're more mature to be able to guard after a disappointing offensive possession another guy who is stepping up we're going to talk about him more in the show is dane goodwin he played his best game of the young season in this game seven rebounds 11 points and he had nine in the second half when it 
times you were dying for points. This guy's the limit for Dane Goodwin, and we need him to be aggressive. You heard me say how he's very comfortable here being aggressive, and on the road, that hasn't shown up yet. But we'll take what we're getting here right now. And him coming off the bench, being aggressive and getting double figures is important for us. So the Irish beat Marshall 74-64 and spend the weekend getting ready for a visit from the Blue Hose of Presbyterian. We'll show those highlights right after this. On Monday, November 18th, you stepped out of the MABC tournament to take on Presbyterian. And the day started with some great news, not only was John Mooney named the National Player of the Week by CollegeInsider.com. He won his first ever ACC Player of the Week award after averaging 23 points, 16 rebounds, and 3.5 assists against Howard and Marshall. So well deserving. He has the utmost respect of the coaches and the players in our league, and boy does he have his teammates' respect because you just wind him up and turn him loose and it's gonna be a double-double. Of course, he didn't get to celebrate much on this day because he woke up with a stomach virus. I know, I know. So of all the things, right, I get the call at 9 a.m., we're not gonna have John Mooney, the ACC Player of the Week. And as you've seen in college basketball, anything can happen. And we had to fight for our life to escape Presbyterian. Gibbs had 10 points, three assists, and Fluger, a team high 13 points, six assists, three rebounds, two steals. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Well, those two guys on the defensive end, and then when we needed key buckets, just kind of took over and said, we're down some guys tonight, but we're not going to lose in here tonight. And I, and I give them, boy, I give them a lot of credit and a lot of respect for their toughness and grit to get us out of here, you know, and, and escape. Without Mooney or Carmody, the Irish beat Presbyterian 60-50, and three days later, you jump back into the MABC tournament to take on a good Toledo team in the title game. You hit seven of your first 13 shots, but again, you cool right off, and it's a defensive struggle the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, again, our defense had to save us, and we do guard. I mean, we can defend. We've got some veteran guys that understand how to play defense together. Right now, if we have that in, in you know, kind of protected, let's go with that and keep working on our offense. You're down five inside of three minutes left, and the energy in this building is, there's no way that they can win. Fluger gets the deflection, dives to the floor to bat the ball ahead to Hub for a critical layup. That changed the game. Changed the whole game and kind of had us believe it again, and then we were able to rely on our D to kind of keep this thing close and get it to game situations. But you're still down three with one and a half seconds left, inbounding the ball under the Toledo hoop, taking me through the play. Well, you know, I, I had flashbacks to Maui a little bit. We had the same guy taking the ball out of bounds, Rex Fluger, who's poised and waits for things to develop. And we kind of ran a, a shooter off a stagger screen. And then Johnny set a great inside screen on Nate. And my feeling was, let's get Nate the shot. He delivered for us. We executed it and he knocked it down. And I just hope that really kind of jump starts his confidence. You take the lead for good with 25 seconds left in the overtime when T.J. Gibbs hits Fluger, who made a great backdoor cut. You know, there's two senior guards that have played a lot together. That was not a play. That was out of our motion. That's communication of guys that have played together and just a huge move right there. Our crowd really helped us. And it was, it was just, it was a great win over a team that's probably going to be an NSA tournament team. And, you know, for us to prove that we could do that early in the season, I think helps our confidence. Now Gibbs and Fluger make four straight free throws in the closing seconds. Nobody thought Fluger's free throws mattered. And then Marion Jackson throws it a three at the buzzer. Without those free throws, you go to double overtime. No, is that unbelievable? He throws it in from half court and, and you know, just amazing. But, but again, I don't, you know, it, it was it was neat to see this group celebrate a little bit. You know, they had gotten beaten up last year and and we're still searching for ourselves. We know that. But to kind of do hard things and believe. And again, I think Fluger and Gibbs, especially those two guys, made us keep believing we could figure it out. So you win at 64-62 to win your third in-season tournament in four years, adding the MABC title to your Legends and Maui titles. Well, we felt we wanted to stay at home. Next year, we'll go to the Legends, and the following year, we'll go back to Maui. But again, home identity. Home identity has got to start here. One home game left to show you against Fairleigh Dickinson. Those highlights coming up after this short timeout. You may remember that during our Fairleigh Dickinson pregame interview for the radio, I asked you, are you worried about 
the shooting woes right now? And you said, nah, that's going to come around. Well, you were right. You hit five of your first six shots in this game. You jump out to a 13-0 lead, and then you keep shooting. You end up shooting 51% for the game, 48% from three with 12 makes. You know, it, it's in us. It, it is, because I've seen it over 40 practices be pretty consistent, that being our offense and our shooting of good shots. And we're still trying to find it in game situations. And all we can do is take them when you got them, and, but keep playing defense. And when some guys start to shoot, it has a tendency to be contagious. It wasn't just a few guys who got hot in this game. Nine guys scored in the game, six guys scored in double figures. I thought we were moving it and spreading it and different guys pulling up a little bit like some offenses we've had in the past. And again, so it's there. It's there. It's still in progress here, though, especially on the road when we go on the road. And moving the ball was so key. Three, your three starting guards, Gibbs, Hub, Pfluger, each dished out five assists. You know, we lead the nation in assist to turnover. We're really efficient there. Um, I'd be amazed at how many more assists we'd have if we'd make some of those open shots we pass to. But as long as we keep moving the ball and getting good looks, I think over time it'll play out our favor. Another great sign, your two leading scorers in the game, Nate Leshesky with 16, Dan Goodwin with 15, and that's what those guys are going to need to do now the rest of the year. They have to score for us, there's no question. They have to hunt their shot. We've got to help them get their shot. Um, they must be double-figure scorers for us, uh, and I think they can be. And both those guys have added physicality to their games. They both rebounded well. Yeah, they both, you know, they're both a year older, a year more confident, and, and we just got to keep growing them and and telling them to go for it. I, I just don't want them dwelling on mistakes or missed shots. So the Irish win their sixth game in a row, 91 to 66 over Fairleigh Dickinson. It's time now for us to move to our Vivid Seats performance of the week. And with all these games, we've picked out one play. It's a play you'll probably remember, and it's a play that caused me and my partner, Zach Hillizan, to get, well, maybe a little excited. Rex has the ball, he can't move. He gets it out to Leszewski for three. Oh! It's time now for the experts at TireRack.com. Question of the week for Coach Bray. And Coach, this week's question comes from Bob Thidoff of Columbus, Ohio. Coach, what is the biggest improvement you have seen so far from this year's squad? I just think their will to want to defend together and their talk on the defensive end. As freshmen last year, the first year players were not good communicators defensively. Our old guys, communicate well, but they, the young guys now have gotten to be better communicators. And I think that's why our team defense is reliable. Of course, the Maryland game was important. You've got very important games coming up with UCLA, Indiana in the crossroads, but probably the most important game of this month is your upcoming Saturday home game with Boston College because it's a conference game. Well, we got a league game, you know, we're 0-1 in the league and it'd be great to be 1-1 one one in the league, you know, at Christmas break. Um, so we've got three at home, one on the road before we break for Christmas. I'd like to get back to that home identity that has been pretty good for us so far. And then after the BC game, Detroit Mercy comes here for a Tuesday night game. And that's just one of those games where your guys have to come to work and get it done. Well, we're going to have to play. I mean, you know, Presbyterian, Marshall, Toledo, like we've had game pressure on us here. I love that we figured it out. So I don't know if anything will ever be easy for our group. We're going to have to slog through it, keep defending and keep working on that offensive flow. Coach, as always, thank you very much for your efforts on this show. And folks, that will do it for the first edition of the 20th season of Inside Notre Dame Basketball with Mike Bray. Of course, next week we'll show you all the highlights of the Boston College and Detroit Mercy games. Until then, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Irish. Inside Notre Dame Basketball is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM.